A website creation guide. Create a website introduction. I think the easiest way to set up a website is to go to Weebly. They're as simple as it gets to create a pretty good website, all free. You can buy a website name called a domain and superimpose it over the free name you get from them. Other big free ones are WordPress, Blogspot, and Wix. Angelfire still offers free websites. Even though the following information was written for business websites, it can apply to any type of website. If you're starting, you can do a free blog on a blog website like Blogspot or WordPress or do a website on Facebook.com, MySpace.com, Reddit.com, Tumblr.com, etc. If you want to be more serious, you create your own website with its own name that you own and set up any way you want. This book pretty well has it all about creating a website going from the lazy novice who simply has a Facebook page or uses Weebly to the person who wants to start from scratch using HTML, XML, Java, and all that stuff. There are a lot of video alternatives besides YouTube which I talk about in this book but YouTube has free online courses for anyone who wants to start a YouTube channel, create videos, edit them and polish them for public consumption. It's all there to get started then if you can make professional style videos and find a way to market them, you can move on to film festivals, film distribution companies, etc. which I talk about in my movie making job book. People create websites for personal expression, non-profit communication, activism, and to try to make money. The business end is tenuous at best because the internet is like another gold rush that's about two decades old. Everybody has picked through pretty well everything except for the undiscovered great idea so whatever you decide to do is probably being done right now or has been tried and is dead. I routinely come across dead websites in every field. If your business idea is local in orientation like creating websites for others as a website designer, you can copy other people's ideas and use them for your local area. The hard part is really marketing or what they call website visibility. Some people think it's all about search engine optimization slash SEO, trying to do things on your website so that the big search engine spiders pick up keywords then list your website when a user types in keywords relevant to your website. That's a limited way to look at it because a lot of internet life is a spiritual kind of osmosis. If your website is good, people talk about it on other websites, in forums, etc. Look at 4chan.org. It's one of the biggest websites around for young people but it doesn't get ranked highly on search engines. Simply produce a good quality website that constantly has new material on it so the reader gets a little thrill when they go on it. A good website is all about communicating something unique, helpful, inspirational, and interesting. Start with a basic design. Break the site up into small units for quick and easy navigation like chapters in a book with an easy link to get to each one. After you have developed your site, look it over as a visitor would. Put your email address and telephone number prominently on the first page. There are books on website design at hashtag 000 to hashtag 005 at the library. If you want to learn the hard way, read this book then study HTML code. Chapter 1. Set up a website info. Create a website 1. Ask yourself the following questions. How will my pages be laid out? What graphics will I use? Will my pages be linked to others? How will I place photos of my products? What is my message? What am I going to say? In repeated surveys, analysts who analyze what customers or surfers in general want out of a website have narrowed it down the following key areas. A good-looking website to look at. Not too sparse nor too cluttered. The substance of it. Is it something real or just someone's rantings? How objective and true is the information it provides or is it simply one guy's opinions? How much credibility does the website and the people behind it have? If IBM is behind it, you feel some sense of credibility to it. If the Freedom Rider from Kansas is behind it, you know it's probably one guy's fantasy world. How detailed and honest are the product descriptions? How well do they provide a roadmap for navigating the website? How easy is it to get around with just a quick click of an icon? 
How simple is the order form to use? How fast and cheap is the shipping? What about returns and guarantees? What are the prices like compared to the competition? What about customer service slash support? What if I live in Sri Lanka? Will they service me there? Do they have a forum for customer feedback? The analysts have isolated the following factors as the worst things a website operator could do. Disguise advertising as objective reports or personal recommendations from people not affiliated with any company. Spamming, sending out unsolicited advertising emails. Ignoring email messages customers send asking for general information about the product or asking about their order. After you place an order, they don't verify with a thank you email and order processing form. They just leave you hanging. Not having a toll-free customer service phone number. Have a bunch of add-on surcharges at the end of your order. The website is dull except for selling things. Nothing interesting related to the subject matter of the product line. Content is never updated. No forum for customer feedback. Bait and switch. You order brand X computer, they send you brand Y with a free set of headphones and say it's better. They publish price X on their website but when your credit card bill comes, they actually charged you a higher price Y. No secure seal of approval from one of the few credible internet organizations who grant seals to well-run companies who meet their standards. Nothing written on website about returns, warranties, company policy in general, shipping costs, etc. They sell their mailing list of customer names to others. Take longer than three weeks to get the product delivered. If you want to reach markets in other countries, set up your website in other languages like Spanish, German and Japanese. Be a rip-off artist like everybody else. When you something on another website you like, copy their idea but don't blatantly steal it. Don't go for looks and style over content and function. It's all about your target audience not you. Constantly improve your website. Get feedback from wise people. Publicize your website to get the word out. Don't spam people. Go to search engines and look through such terms as Website creation Website authoring Website developer Webmaster Internet software Set up a website Create a website Tutorial, website HTML, learn Create a website too The general tips are Get a website Set up an electronic press kit which is a photograph and a description of you. The rest is generating publicity to get people to visit your website. You could offer a fee e-newsletter, answer questions, offer free advice, have an online community or a dating website on your website. Submit your website to search engines. Don't send spam, unsolicited email but you can generate an email address book from people who visit your website or get your free e-newsletter so you can send them emails. Write a press release. Send it to media outlets online. The basic process is to Do all your homework before you set it up. Make up your e-commerce business plan. Know your competition online. Learn from them. Be a bit different from them. Price the product as cheaply as you can while making a profit. Put a prominent copyright symbol on your website. Some people will steal your graphic images and content and use it as their own. If you have a newsletter or a book you sell online, some people will take it, rub out your name, put theirs in and sell it as their own. Do an occasional search of a sentence or paragraph of your work, anything more than an eight-word string, to see if it's replicated anywhere else besides your website. Find an ISP or buy a server and send your website out into cyberspace yourself. Create a brand which is an image about yourself achieved by creating a cool logo, a good slogan, a corporate vision in words for all the public to see and good, consistent products and services. Design your website. Make it look professional. Balance graphics and text. Have a great, easy-to-use first page that's not too cluttered up with content. Balance interesting content with your catalog of products. 
make it load fast by going easy on the graphics. If you have a lot of material, you could create two websites with a link to each. Be clean with good clear titles for everything. Make your navigation and linking icons big and clear. Keep the website fresh with new content all the time. Develop a catalog system for your products that makes it easy for customers to get to where they want. Use an extensive table of contents or index such when the customer clicks onto the product name slash category, he is instantly transported there. Have a link for a page describing postage, handling and delivery costs. Describe your products well enough such that people will buy on description and picture alone without seeing it physically. Promote your website any way you can online and offline. Put your email address and website name on all your paper correspondence. Pick your keywords and get listed on as many search engines and directory websites as possible. Get a toll-free business number and get listed on internet telephone directories like yellowpg.com. Develop reciprocal advertising with other non-competing websites. You put a banner and link on their website, they put the same on your website. Provide a shopping cart, shopping cart software, which is a roving order form that goes with the customer and fills up as he clicks on orders or removes products. After the customer sends the order to you, a good shopping cart software package or a clerk at your office would immediately send the customer an email saying they got the order and will process it. If the order form is not very simple and quick, they will abandon your website. Don't ask personal questions, especially at the beginning of the order. Don't use a customer profile until after their first order is delivered then send an email with an offer for $10 credit if they fill it out. In order to keep the customer happy, offer a secure server which means that you are using encryption software that encodes the order in transit such that nobody will understand it but the sender and the receiver. Offer a great shopping experience. Develop a good and simple method of payment through the various electronic systems there are out there. Take credit cards, ATM cards, e-cards, credit cards, virtual checks, the ability to process a personal check through the internet, etc. Instead of ordering over the web, offer the option that they can pick their items then phone your toll-free number to order. Send an email confirmation of the order. Have a security system. Get a security seal of approval from one of the organizations that offers them if you pass their standards test. Offer gift wrapping and a special day reminder service such as you will be sent an email telling you about upcoming important days in your life like your wife's birthday, anniversary, daughter's graduation, etc. Get your delivery process set up. Set up a contract with one of the big parcel services or go through the USPS which takes packages up to 75 pounds. Most delivery companies will come to you to pick up your outgoing packages. Develop an inventory tracking system so if a customer orders anything, you know right away if you have it in stock or have to order it from your supplier. Create good customer service by encouraging feedback and offering special deals through sales emails that you send them from time to time offering a great deal. Get some manner of software that tracks customer purchase patterns then offer them new products the software says they might be interested in. Amazon.com does this for customer reading habits, suggesting new books based on past purchases. You could have a customer profile where you offer the customer a $10 credit for filling out your questionnaire which you tell him you will use to better serve him by offering new products that he's interested in. Create a website 3. There is no single right way to create a website. Design or plan out your website then look at other websites to get ideas from them. The website is a main homepage which links to the other pages. Personally, I prefer a straight scroll through rather than clicking to five different pages. If your website is short, keep it all on the homepage. Make sure the links work by checking them periodically. Go through all your pages checking for problems and mistakes. When a person scrolls down, make it so the page down key works as well as the arrow keys. A lot of websites use just the arrow keys. I usually leave them in frustration. Keep it up to date and accurate. Offer a money back guarantee prominently placed on the order form. Develop a reputation that your website and products are good. 
Check your competitors' websites for their ideas and their prices. Provide incentives to return to your websites like good information, the chat room, a contest, entertainment, an expert that answers questions, an e-zine, etc. That's your job. To get your information to your prospective customers, you have to get it to them so it's easily accessible with a simple domain name right at their fingertips. You do this by getting into search engines, chat rooms, news groups, bulletin boards, linking up with related websites, etc. and letting the people get into your website quickly to see something interesting, useful, funny and slash or practical. You might want to put in a toll-free 800 number and slash or offer a fax on demand service which faxes somebody information or an order form if they request it. Your first order of business is to learn about search engine slash directory so you know where to find things. In a nutshell, keep it simple, make your text readable, use paragraph breaks, use graphics sparingly because they interfere with content and take too long to download. Don't make your website too cluttered. Don't even waste time on cute graphics unless they're functional in some way. Create a website for. A web design of a web page is mainly based on technologies such as use of HTML, CSS, ASP, SSL, PHP, XML, and others. The design should be smooth, aimed at the target audience. It should be easy to navigate. It should look good. Web design consists of text, pictures, video, and any app somebody has thought up. The two types of websites are 1. Static pages, only a human user or the webmaster of the site can update this. Kind of web pages. 2. Dynamic pages, this type of web pages is dependent on the input or requests made by the end users. The clients or the end users can modify the content of the web pages as in a wiki or YouTube. Web design should be user friendly. The appearance must be as simple as possible. Hyperlinks enable the users to easily navigate from one page or place within a website to another. HTML still takes some learning to master. You're conveying a theme or message through your website. Be true to it. Don't fill a serious website up with a bunch of novelty junk. A collection of interrelated web pages makes a website which is created with scripting tools and languages. The main scripting languages are XML, CSS, DHTML, JavaScript, and HTML. To get noticed among the numerous other websites, you have to do search engine optimization, SEO, and use other marketing techniques. If you have no money, you will have to design your own website then find a website hosting service, some are free, after which you upload the main file called index.html then all the other ones which have a hyperlink from index.html. You can always hire somebody to improve your website as you make money. While designing a website, its usability is to be kept in mind. Use big fonts. The website should be so designed that users can navigate through it with ease. Pick a relevant domain name. Content should be as rich in keywords and meta tags to help get SEO. The web designs should not be too flashy that it appears clumsy and difficult to navigate. Maintain a consistency of style throughout the web pages. Unnecessary video, images, and audio files should not be added. The links and hyperlinks on the website should be so placed that the users can easily look up for their desired pages or information. Color can be used to make the web pages attractive, to highlight major content on the pages, to frame and also to differentiate content from another. Place text against a white background. Colors are used to differentiate, highlight, and identify elements on web pages. A logo is a visual representation of the identity of your business or organization. You might want to put one on your website. The target audience will help define the purpose of the website. The content of the website is to be prepared according to the requirements of the users. The information should be well organized. Get rid of redundant information. Categorize the content. Use titles. Nowadays, a page layout for a website can be created without even the knowledge of HTML or any similar software. There are many tools that 
is the task of layout designing. The dimension of the web pages can be maintained by limiting the height and width of the page margins. A fixed width layout is when the web content including both textual and non-textual does not change even with change of browsers. With liquid width layouts, the content on the web page flows to adjust itself to fit the window irrespective of the size of the browser window. Liquid width layout designs can be expanded and contracted as required to fill up the available space on the web pages. Hypertext markup language slash HTML is the backbone of any web page. This computer language is written in. The form of tags and the text is kept within angled brackets. The first step of using HTML is formatting texts. Some of the complex features of HTML are anchor tags, layering, framing, etc. A more updated version of HTML is known as XHTML. The primary components of hypertext markup language are as follows. Attributes, offers added information about instance of an element. Elements, helps in identifying the various parts of HTML page. Entities, denotes the non, ASCII text characters. In web designing, both cascading style sheet, CSS, and table-based layouts are used. Table-based layout is an older version of web design. CSS combined with XHTML makes a visual layout of a website. CSS-based layouts are considered better than table layouts by many web designers. One of the basic differences of CSS and table is that in table layouts the content is not separated from visual data, while in case of CSS, both are separated. There are a number of reasons why CSS is considered superior to table layouts for web design like 1. Time for loading a web page, the websites with table-based layouts take longer time to load than CSS-based layouts. 2. Redesigning or editing websites, it takes much longer time to redesign a website with table-based layouts. Since in CSS, the content and the visual data can be kept separated, it helps the web designer to work fast and with ease compared to table layouts. 3. Visual consistency, a visual consistency can be kept all over the website when it is designed with CSS. In case of table layouts for web pages, a web designer has to edit code for individual pages and also adjust other features to give the pages a consistent look. 4. Usability of websites, with the use of CSS, a website is easier to use for the viewer. The website has to be search engine friendly so that the web crawlers can identify it easily. Use meta tags containing relevant keywords so that crawlers can easily find the pages. Create a website 5. There are two types of websites you are likely to build, depending on the objectives and the nature of your business. If you have an existing business venture and have a product or service that you already market to the general public, chances are you're planning to build a website that you can use to promote and market your existing product or service online. This is called a storefront website and some examples include Toyota.com, Pepsi.com, and Disney.com. The second type of domain is a venture website. Your principal purpose for creating this website is to create a business venture out of the website itself. The product that you are selling here is the website itself, based on the strength of its content or format. These content venture websites could be anything like virtual magazines, search engines, homepage hosting domains, buyer-seller websites like eBay, real estate sales, etc. Once you identify what type of website you are building, move on to the next question, who's going to visit your website? If you are building a storefront then the answer seems academic. After all, your web presence serves only as an extension of your real word business and marketing activities. Whoever Toyota's products appeals to will likely be the same people their website will attract. On the other hand, if you are building a venture website, who your audience will be will depend largely on the name of it, the style by which you design it, where you advertise it and the content that you put in it. Without going into much detail, your objective in all cases is to design a website that offers information and entertainment as well as advertising to sell your products or services, whatever they might be. 
that's the golden rule. The internet is made up of, or shared by, different types of websites, each of them identified by the three-letter code that follows the domain name. Com, commercial, business and industry. EDU, education institutions. Gov, government, non-military. Mil, military and defense, military research, etc. Org, organizations, non-profit operations. Net, network, service networks. Chapter 2. Website Creation Topics. The Golden Rules of a Good Website. Simplicity is the highest virtue. The golden rule is to be so unique that people will come to you and keep coming back. Be interactive, let them contribute. To me, it's a drag to have to go looking all over the place to find what you want even within one website. The homepage, first page, has to be simple and clear. Contrary to the myth, cuteness is out, it just confuses people. Present your information and your icons that people can click on and that's it. Don't include any extra pictures except for a company name and logo. It's not about you. It's about the viewer. See it from his or her point of view. Make it very easy for him or her to navigate your site. Your website has to have the perception that you're helping the viewer and this is how you sell, by being good. It's the soft sell. The second you try for a hard sell if you're selling a product that has competitors, you're sunk, they will go to other websites. The worst thing I can't stand is hype. I read that a website had company information on it so I went on and it didn't even have their addresses, just the city they were located in. This is a lazy webmaster. If they can't provide what I want the first time I'm there, I go elsewhere. Get their interest quickly or they will leave. It has to be simple to use to get to the products they want to look at. Keep some empty space on the pages to make it look relaxing and smooth. Don't make the site complicated. It must be very easy to use. Don't make viewers pre-register. You can get their email address by asking for it, permission marketing, asking if they want a free email newsletter mailed to them or asking they want to be informed of new products and sales. Make the purchase process simple and clear. Explain all costs including shipping. After someone sends you an email order, send one right back thanking them, telling them to expect the product in a few weeks. Go easy on the text. Explain your concepts simply. Offer translated websites or refer viewers to babelfish.altavista.com to translate. Don't use pop-up windows with stupid ads in them. Use icons. They can click them if they want. Don't use background music. Use music if it's relevant to your presentation. Minimize the use of pictures and graphics. Don't use flashes or any other special effects. Don't use fancy, colorful backgrounds. Don't put in streaming video unless it's relevant. Don't use fancy text fonts. Check all your links weekly. Get rid of links to dead websites. Don't make the simple arrow cursor look more elaborate. Don't use long-winded descriptions. Keep the sentences short. Make the website helpful and slash or entertaining. Let customers help build it up by contributing information. This is sometimes called peer-to-peer -peer sharing. Have a chat room and news group. Create a website one-liners. Most websites are text. Make it clear and crisp like a grade 10 project. Do you give your viewers what they want? Can viewers send you an email? Viewers want to know where you're located. Is your navigation clear and simple? Why are some websites easy to scroll while others are really clunky? Your writing style has to be simple. That's what people like. Offer the most important information right away. Don't bury it. Look at Google and Yahoo. Yahoo seems cluttered, too much stuff I don't want to see. Don't change website names much because it messes up links to your website. If your site is big, create a site map or index. Beware of free or low-cost website hosts. Always back up your website by saving it on your computer. Pick a good website name and buy it, 
GoDaddy.com. Create your website for people not search engine rankings. Focus on the look and content. Provide people with what they want. Your website should be easy to navigate. If you're presenting information, present it matter-of-factly with one font size, black text not like those ads with big red letters and multicolored text. Make your site easy to navigate so somebody doesn't have to download a plugin to use it. Your logo on every page should link back to the homepage. Make your links obvious. Don't put text in color amidst black text unless it's a link. Don't contrast colors such that it's hard to read the text. If a user clicks onto the back, make sure he gets to the previous page. Make it easy to bookmark your page as a favorite. Check your site for broken links then delete them. They make viewers think you're a slacker. Test your site through three browsers, Internet Explorer, Mozilla, and Opera. People hate horizontal scrolling. Make your page width fit the screen. Don't use pictures unless they mean something. Put your name and logo on every page. Don't assume that just because a user is on your site, they know who you are. Text should be simple and devoid of jargons as far as practicable. The web design should be friendly enough so that users find it easy to navigate the site. The links provided on the web pages for buying products online should work. The hyperlinks on web pages should be checked regularly. The web pages within a site should be well linked with each other such that the user can always get back to the main homepage. If you're offering something like a free video to watch, don't say you have to download Real Player first to view it. It should be ready to view at the touch of a button. Don't use large pictures. They take away from the purpose of the site. Keep plenty of white space on the pages. Use big and easily readable text. Focus more on content than page design. Consider users' participation like a comments section, chat section, etc. Give the user an easy option to resize the text. Use short paragraphs, a simple style of writing and highlight keywords. Don't use pop-up windows. Everybody hates the intrusion. Use a voluntary link instead. Minimize the use of decorative images. The content posted on web pages should be dated for convenience of users. Regularly update content. Use chronology, new articles first. Put the old ones in a monthly archive. Personally, I use pictures only if they're directly relevant to content. When I see pictures for decoration, I know the website is at least half frivolous. Images can be used to link other relevant pages on the site. Create a frequently asked questions section from questions that people send you. Users will stop using a site if they can't find the information they want within three mouse clicks. Make order forms and other forms simple to use. Is your site accessible for users with disabilities? Check my disabilities book. Keep font size between 12 to 20. If it takes more than 15 seconds for your site to load, some viewers won't stick around for it to load. Your domain must describe what you do. Google and Yahoo are exceptions because they were there at the beginning. What does imsh.com or flickr.com mean? Does your site display correctly in different screen resolutions? Offer a search function for both within your website and for a search engine. Make a privacy policy if you're gathering email addresses. Make it clear whether you'll sell their email address and how often they'll get email from you. A liquid layout means the page conforms to the user's browser settings. Spelling and grammar errors tell me you couldn't very smart. Don't have a cool looking splash page because I don't care. I went to a website design company's website. There was like about a three minute show before I could see who they were, what their prices were. Why didn't they put an icon in the corner saying cool effects or something like that? Ensure that users know when they're clicking an email link to expect their email program to pop up. Change the site regularly just like a department store changes its store window displays. Create a community atmosphere and help your customers with non-shopping information in whatever field you're in. Name your website. Pick a simple domain name that's unique enough for people to remember. 
Some people ride piggyback on popular domain names. Let's say bigboey.com is a popular website. If you were smart, when you created it, you also would have bought bigboey.org, bigboey.net, and bigboeys.com because if you didn't, others would buy it and get your residual business from people making educated guesses to try to get to your site. Don't trust a web hosting service to register a name for you. They might register themselves as the legal owners so when you get tired of their inadequate service and want to move, they will still own the website name. Beware that the website name you pick is not trademarked otherwise you will have to give it up. Check it out at usb and nameprotect.com. If you want to trademark your website name, do it through usb If somebody snatches a website name similar to your website name, personal name, or business, go to domain-magistrate.com for legal recourse. For doing business on the internet, you have to get a good name that's uniform for email, website, and autoresponder something like a vanity license plate rather than some stupid, technical name some provider will assign you for your generic $20 a month fee. To get a good domain name for your website, you have to register it with the Internet Network Information Center. The fee from your ISP or anyone else to set it up should be no more than $10 to $75 otherwise you're getting ripped off. GoDaddy.com is one of the cheapest. Internic Information Services. San Diego, California, 92186-9784-888-642-9675-619-455-4600. Fax, 619-455-4640. Info at internic.net. Internic.net. To avoid hassles, it's probably easiest to get your provider to set it up for you providing you are the legal owner of the name. To check out all the domain names currently out there, go to rs.internic.net slash whois. Check domain.com. If you are creating a virtual magazine and you want to attract pet owners for your audience then you would want to choose a name like petheaven.com. Beware that if the name you choose is too common, People will confuse it with other website names so pick something simple but a little bit unusual so they will remember it. Set up a website. There's no magic to setting up a website. It's just a piece of text and graphics on a server. The big deal is to make it easily accessible to all the internet users out there. You can create your own website with something as simple as Windows Notepad and any word processing software that can be stored as ASCII text and most can. Go to mailback.com and click on the painless web pages option for lots of good, free advice. Your website host gives you your FTP parameters. They are the server name, your username and password. If your software has a built-in FTP engine, it is very simple to publish your website. When your site is published, examine it. Test everything out. Business websites follow the basic rules of business. Your business will be judged according to how the website looks and functions. Speed of download is important. Customers want it fast. Your grammar and use of the English language give away who you really are. People want a website that's easy to understand and navigate, not convoluted. People generally don't want cute clutter. They want functional content. There's more to it than just putting up your website. You need to promote it. There are many search engines, databases of websites, on the web, each of which you can submit information about your website to. All it entails is accessing each search engine and reading the details on submissions. If you get a professional to design your website, see if they include this in their services, to submit your website to different search engines. Don't confine your publicizing to online. Be sure to promote your website in the real world through paid advertising, press releases, etc., just like a product. You will need to ensure that people who visit your website will want to come back frequently. Do this by changing your content on a regular basis. If you have informational articles that people can download for free, rotate the reports so new ones are available at least every two weeks. Contests can be a good idea, too. 
Give a free product to the person who collects all the clues that you sprinkle throughout your website over a two-month period. Save what you want in HTML code and use it. Although it's good to know some HTML code if you're designing your own website, most website and word processing programs have text conversion formatting that switches your text into HTML format automatically. Many business websites make the mistake of being dry, dull, and not focused on making the customer happy and interested. The bottom line is that a business website is just like a full-page ad in a magazine. How often do you skip over them without a second glance? You must apply the golden rule of business, appeal to your customer. Give the customer some free information before you make your sales pitch to make them more receptive to you. The real deal is that there aren't a heck of a lot of people on the net and those that are aren't really great shoppers. It's mostly college kids, nerds, lonely hearts, sex addicts, and other pseudo-intellectuals who prefer to browse the cerebral-slash-emotional sites rather than the commercial websites so don't expect a tidal wave of immediate responses unless you're selling something hip. You have to offer people some reason to want to visit like a discount, a cool product line or some cool graphics and free practical information. Offer a cute trivia game with a free prize for people who get all the questions right. Put your website address on all your print correspondence, print ads, business cards, etc. Keep updating your website and offer short articles and tidbits of information to your prospective customers. If you sell old records, try offering weekly trivia like photos of the old stars, get a scanner and scan pictures in, get biographical articles about the old stars and load them in, Offer current addresses of old stars and where they're currently performing and even invite old stars on for online video chat and to promote their records and t-shirts. Text is easy to download, graphics take time. Extensive graphics are often a useless commodity put there to look pretty and gets more complicated with file compression, sound, and video cuties. Focus on practicality unless you really need the graphics to show your product. Save the cute stuff for later when you're making it. Make your text in simple, basic ASCII code so that it's compatible with different types of computers and different word processing software. In order to save space and time on the graphics, offer little windows and thumbnails of visual displays so if the viewer wants to see the full version of it, he can click it on. If not, he can continue to scroll down through your website without wasting time waiting for the download. There are two ways to get your website online. The first way is to do it yourself with your own equipment called a server which is like a host computer with an around-the-clock connection on the internet. This will cost a few thousand bucks. You can go through a local provider called a website hosting company who will hook you up and rent you the space for about $100 or so a month. One thing about providers is the extreme disparity in the prices they charge for this service. I've seen some try to capitalize on the ignorance of many business people by charging outrageous prices to set up a website so you have to check around for a good, cheap low price. Get your local or state computer newspaper and look through the ads in there. Once you get a website set up, try to make it interactive by having a link on it which sends the user into your chat room slash bulletin board where anyone can post comments and articles about the subject matter of your business, something like boats travel, etc. From all this traffic, you can get their email addresses and start sending them educational stuff with an ad at the end. Links are good for business. Get several hundred websites relating to your field, email them all asking if you can put their link on your site and your link on theirs. Do not put links of other websites on your website without prior approval, email response agreeing to link. Some website owners have taken legal action to stop anyone from linking onto their sites calling it copyright infringement or trespassing. They don't want their high-quality website linked in with a lower-quality one. This is the way they think even if there is no objective basis to it. Whenever you link, do the ethical thing and link the use to another website's menu page. Deep linking is when a website owner puts a link on his or her website that goes somewhere in the middle of someone else's website such that the user doesn't know he or she are linked to another website. They just think it's another page of the original website they're logged onto. If you have a link to a site that has illegal or libelous content, 
you could be charged as a collaborator. When you pay a website designer to design a website for you, as the creator, he owns the copyright of what he has created unless he signs it all over to you. Tell him you want the rights to full ownership of whatever he has created for you. Get it in writing. There are enough website designers out there such that you can find one who will do exactly what you want. If the website designer is one of your employees doing it on your time as opposed to an independent contractor, you own the rights to the website. Back up everything on your original website and keep it in either or both a backup website with another domain name and on a hard drive or CD-ROM. If you have your own server, this is no problem. If you don't want to pay for a second website, use a free host and post it there to be used in case your regular website crashes for one reason or another. Send emails to your mailing list explaining the situation and directing them to your other website. Start your website simply then build it up as you go along. Don't have a song and dance that all users have to wade through before they can choose what they want like them silly telephone recordings where you have to listen for a minute before you can press your coys. Have a menu with icons for all your different categories. Put a link back to the menu page on every page. Have a feature whereby people can email you directly from the site without having to log off to email you. Offer a text-only version of your website without the graphics. Get friends to use your site and give you an analysis. Change things on your site regularly to keep people stimulated. Have a feedback option. Don't ask for personal information or ask people to register. Develop either an optional mailing list where you ask them if they want to leave their email address in order to get a regular free newsletter or information about new deals or use the one from your customer base. Be clear about shipping and other charges. Check your website on several different computers to see how it works. At the end of every email, put all your contact info in your signature. Ways to host your website There are a number of ways to host your website ranging in price and how much control you actually have over the machines. The simplest way is to call up a website hosting company that you see advertising in either the yellow pages or in a computer magazine. You pay a fee. They give you space on their big hard drive which you access with a password. You get a domain name and whatever content you put on that space is what is accessed by people who log onto your website. A variation of this are free website hosters who give you some free space in exchange for running their ads through your website. Businesses don't go this route. Hobby sits and others use these free services to disseminate information. Business or e-commerce website hosters are kind of like e-commerce consultants. They will help you set up a website with all the usual features of a business website, the shopping carts, the merchant credit card status, the secure money transactions, etc. Dedicated hosting is where you rent a server from a hosting service that stays on their property. It is configured to your system at your business where you operate your website from but the server is at the hoster's place. Managed hosting is dedicated hosting with the hosters being your webmasters or technical people on top of renting you the server. Colocation service is a situation like one of those storage rental places except it's for servers. You rent a room at one of these places that's set up for high-speed internet capacity, put your server and stuff in along with your own technician and operate your website from there. Of course, it is hooked up to your computer at your office. These are usually located at industrial parks. Independent hosting is not that expensive or hard anymore. You buy a server, set it up in your own house or business and run the website from there. It is on 24 hours a day so you should have a big fan or air conditioning to keep it cool. Servers don't cost that much anymore so in my opinion, this is the best way because you're in control. You're not dependent on others nor do you have to pay monthly fees. Get a backup generator in case your electricity goes out. Get a backup hard drive for your website hard drive. Some people get a backup server that kicks in if server 1 fails. Chapter 3 Use a server to broadcast your website. Set up your own server. You can set up your own web server from your business or home with an ordinary computer and the right software. Buy a static internet link from your telephone or cable company. 
your computer must be always switched on, with web server software like Apache. This will save you the monthly payments to a website hosting company and all the technical hassles of editing your website. You need cable modem access or equal strength internet access. Try hashtag point zero zero four dash hashtag point zero zero five or hashtag six fifty eight point eighty four and HF fifty five forty eight at the library for books about setting up a server. The best software is probably Microsoft NT Server to set up the server and Microsoft Front Page to set up the website. Microsoft Word converts easily into HTML format. Serverwatch.internet.com Lifehacker.com ActiveServerPages.com Apache.org, Website Operating System ApacheToday.com ApacheWeek.com Aaron.net American Registry of Internet Numbers ASP101.com ASPCode.net ASPIN.com ASPObjects.com ASPSite.com Authorized.net, Secure.Authorized.net, Get Merchant Credit Card Status BandwidthFinders.com Cata.org, Cooperative Association for Internet Data Analysis CastleRock.com Cisco.com Covalent.net Website Operating System Apache DigX.com Digitalisland.net Intrust.net Info on creating a secure server line ExecSoft.com Slash What's New Flashline.com FTP.CAC.Washington.edu Slash IMAP GigaNet.com Graph9-net.com, access to shopping cart software at net catalog. Hostingresolve.com. IBM.com slash e-server, sell web servers. IETF.org. Inetathome.com, info about setting up a server. ISC.org. Java.sun.com. Johnhagel.com, consultant. Linux.com. Website Operating System Linux.org MeasurementFactory.com Microsoft.com slash Application Center Microsoft.com slash Frontpage slash WPP slash Serke Microsoft.com slash ISN Microsoft.com slash Windows 2000 slash Server Minecraft.com slash Webstone MPLSRC.com msdn.microsoft.com mysql.com networkice.com open.specbench.org php.net set up web content qosforum.com slash tech underscore resources radware.com redat.com server.com somaserver.com sun.com slash solstice Swagate.com TCPDump.org Telephonezian.com Urchin.com Vario.com Wabstract.com Webdev.org Weberdev.com Webreview.com Webtrends.com Wingate.deerfield.com Winproxy.com Xilinx.com Xo.com Yipes.com ZDNet.com slash e-testing labs Zend.com